Dr. B.C. Afolayan is a missionary evangelist, international Bible teacher, conference speaker, author, and pastor. He's the founding pastor of Glory Impact Christian Center and president of B.C. Afolayan World Outreach based in Lagos, Nigeria. He has for decades preached the full gospel with signs following throughout Nigeria, Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, North and South America. He's a highly sought-after speaker in major churches in Nigeria and has taught in Bible schools associated with Agape International Leadership Institute in Hungary, Hong Kong, Malaysia and Taiwan. Dr. B.C. is very unique in his deep insight in the Word of God and a teaching method which produces great faith in the hearers. He has conducted several healing evangelical crusades and school of ministries especially in Asia and many have testified to miraculous healing, creative miracles, radical transformation and spiritual revivals. His regular publication, Leaves of Healing, teaching CDs and online podcasts have been of a tremendous blessing to many. He is married to Uluwa Busola who is a partner in the ministry and they are blessed with amazing children. A round of applause please as we welcome. Dr. B.C. Afolayan. Thank you. 
You are the risen King. She dead in majesty. Lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise this morning. Bless the name of the Lord. Sunday, Yarala, Bade, Koto, Sida, Ladaba. Ie kada la madayada Sude koda ea Do shadalada mayadede Can you just pray with the Holy Spirit? Ile mando sande kada ya la madaba Mayamana made kada ya la madaba Ie kada lida bayada Mando supre ke de yada madanida, oh madada yada, e ba yada lada, mande kada da yada lada ba yada lada ba yedi bada, oh. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Mando shekata ya de le de bosh. Ye barada ba ye. for your presence we thank you for the confirmation of your word and once again we ask this morning Lord that you will rend the heavens that you will touch every life Lord let there be an outpouring of your spirit into this place today in the mighty name of Jesus Father, we thank you for miracles. We thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord, for breakthroughs. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for an impartation of the spirit of grace. We give you all the glory. Have your way, O oh Lord. 
In Jesus' name. Before we take our seats, there is someone here, you are having a pain in your chest. Right at the center of your chest, you have a pain right at the center of your chest. The power of God is touching you right now. Right now. I command that pain to go now. Be released. Be released. Be released. In the name of Jesus. There are two individuals here. You are battling with fear. Fear of sickness. This fear is coming to your heart. That the sickness is going to come that will take away your life. You've been battling with it, but the fear keeps coming. And as a result of that, sometimes you are scared. You don't even want to go and do checkup. You feel there is something they will discover that will take away your life. This morning, the power of God is here. That spirit of fear, I speak to it. The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of, a love, and of love and of a sound mind. I bind that spirit of fear and I command it out in the name of Jesus. Be released now in the name of Jesus. There are three individuals experiencing instant healing in their bodies. Please, if you came here with a disease, a sickness, can you please just check your bodies? Check whatever you cannot do before. Three individuals, they are receiving that healing. They are receiving that healing. Thank you, Lord, for that healing. Let your healing power flow all over this place. Let the yoke of infirmity break. Let it break. Let it break. Let there be release for your people. Now, in the name of Jesus. Check your bodies. If you know you are receiving healing, can you wave your hands? You receive a healing. Wave your hand. That is number one. You receive a healing. That's number two. That's number three. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There are two individuals here. You have sick parents at all. And you are scared that they may die of that sickness. I'm not going to call you out, but it's important you raise up your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to connect. You have a sick parent and you are afraid that they will die. Lord, as this, your children lift up those hands, I stand by the authority in the world and by the anointing released into this place today. I command the power behind that infirmity to break now in the name of Jesus. I command that sickness be uprooted out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever they are, let the hand of God touch them. Let your healing power touch them. Let your healing power touch them. Let there be complete restoration in Jesus name. Please, if you came with a sickness, keep checking. More people are getting healed. The number has increased to seven. Seven people are healed right now. Right now. Seven individuals. You are healed right now. Please keep checking. Keep checking. There is a woman here. You have a pain on the left side of your stomach, of your belly. Left side. You've been carrying that pain. You've been using pain medications. God is releasing you from that pain. Right now, I command that pain. Go now in the mighty name 
of Jesus. Go now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed. Jesus. Miracles are taking place. Please don't be carried away. Miracles are taking place. Miracles are taking place. I see a woman here. I see a scar. But the scar is inside. There is a scar inside. Something happened. I, I don't know what happened, but I see a, a scar. A kind of a healing that took place and then it formed a scar. And something became, you know, um, it, it, the, 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 you know, the size was shrunken, reduced. That's a medical term they call it. I think it's stenosis, something like that. Uh, and it, it's happening with your reproductive system. I think your fallopian tube. One side of it, one side. Whether you've had a surgery before or you have a cyst or whatever, but I see a star, a, a scar. And as a result of that scar, you go into pain. You go into pain. But I want to say to you by the Spirit of God, there is healing taking place now. God is giving you a new tube, a new one, a new one right now, right now. That periodic pain that come is terminated now in the name of Jesus. You are healed now. You are healed now in the name of Jesus. Healings are taking place. There's a woman there you've been trying to conceive. You've had a child and you want to conceive another one. But it's not been coming. It's not been coming. I don't need to call you out. But for this particular person, you don't need to raise up your hand. The power of God is coming upon you where you are. You've been trying to conceive another child. It's not been coming. I come against that power that I've been standing against your conception. I come against the power. I speak to that power. I command you, break your hold loose. All oh, your hold loose. Go, go, go. In the name of Jesus. I say to you now, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Before this year is over. Yeah, this is November ending. Before December 31st. You will testify of that baby. In the name of Jesus. And you won't lose that pregnancy. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you receive a healing in your body, can you raise your hand? You receive a healing. Now, if you receive a healing and you raise your hand, can you step out, please? It's important. I need to touch you. You receive a healing in your body. Come to the front. Come to the front. I just need to touch you. Shalaba koto sikaba. I saw a total of seven people get healed to the glory of God. Hallelujah. The affliction will not come back again. Again. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Why they are standing outside? There is someone here. You have a sibling who has been bedridden. A sibling. And everyone in your family is giving up because they've been spending and spending. The enemy sent that sickness to that sibling to punish your family, to drain the finances of your family. Please, I want you to release your faith for that your sibling. I want to pray right now. The power of God is going to visit him wherever he is. Lord, I pray. Please, can the person come out? It's important. I need to pray. I need to join my faith with you. 
You have a sibling who has been bedridden, who has been sick. A sibling who has been sick. I need to pray for you. I need to hold your hand. It's important. Where is that individual? You are that person. I need to pray for you. Your two hands. Can I have an usher stand behind her? Fekubra ilahash. Ende kopi e zubra e kupaya. I use you as a point of contact to that your sibling. And I release the creative power of God to flow to him now. 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 The sacrifices made, the covens where they called his name, the altars where they tied him to, I decree let him be released now in the name of Jesus. I use your sister as a point of contact to you and I said in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth sets you free, you are released now. In the name of Jesus. Let the creative power of God flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow to you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let it flow to you. In the name of Jesus. Let it flow to you. In the name of Jesus. Affliction will not rise again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for this, your children. Thank you for their healing. Their healing is permanent in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not bring back the sickness. In the name of Jesus. The enemy is defeated over your health completely. In the name of Jesus, the enemy is defeated over your health. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Something came to my spirit. I, I, I prepared to preach, but you see, God is ministering to individuals. There, there is three people. You're here. You have continuous battles in your dream. Every time you dream is nightmares. Continuous battles. Sometimes you wake up scared. Sometimes you wake up, you are sweating. Your heart is beating fast. You've prayed, you fasted, but it's like the more you pray, the more the battles increase. There is an anointing to set you free. And I will need to call these individuals out. Three of you is important. Continuous battle in your dream is in the dream. Others can sit down. Others can sit down. Three people continuous you've prayed you fasted oh mekara shataba libro notosa keto sika zambra kato shekete ibra kostupela elubra namashta my god and my father your word says let god arise and let his enemies be scattered the covenant that tied you down to those dreams that makes it impossible for you to be free by the power in the blood of Jesus I command let those covenants break now in the name of Jesus today under this anointing, I declare over you, you are free. Young lady, 
anything they have passed into your body through those dreams, I command it to be uprooted right now in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God come upon you. Now, now, now. Perilous, perilous, perilous. In the name of Jesus. From this hour, you become a lion. A nashakapa. Pushaka rekopayaba. My God, my God. Something is coming out. That strength thing passed to you. Is a project. Now. In the name of Jesus. By the reason of the anointing. You are delivered from that dream pollution. You are delivered. You are delivered. You are delivered. Now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Today, by the reason of the anointing, you are delivered from that dream pollution. You are delivered. You are delivered. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. You can go back to your seats. Bring her again. Put your hands together for the Lord. Once again this morning, uh, this afternoon, I want to give thanks to God for the privilege to be here and to bring the word of God to you again. I want to thank our daddy and our mommy in the house. I call them Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Amen. Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Iyala. I've told you the story of how I met with the first uh, mommy, Yala. Incidentally, they are not related. I came into Lagos, no place to stay. I didn't know anybody. And uh, this mommy, Yala, saw me and took me to her house. She doesn't know anything about me. She just felt she needed to help me. And I lived in her house till I got married. <laughs> Praise God. So that name, Iyala, is a name I can never forget. Glory be to God. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. The Lord will continue to honor you and pastor in the name of Jesus. And I want to say to you, you are in a good place. I've known them, I think it should be more than 10 years now. And they have been consistent in the Lord. Cons somebody, say, somebody put it this way, say, consistently consistent. <laughs> glory be to God the Lord will honor you and I want to appreciate everyone that is serving in this house you know I've been a part of this house for years and this is my church but in recent times and you know I follow you online every of your services I follow and I was as I was saying yesterday I noticed that the choir have really improved and the choir is really in the spirit Amen. And I was saying when I, you know, that I've never seen these people in the choir. It's you that I know. I know you have been in the choir. But when I first knew you, you were very much younger. 
Amen. <laughs> I don't think you were married then. You are. Oh, really? You didn't look married. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, but thank God for all the new faces and thank God for what you guys are doing. You know, great, great, great work for the Lord. The Lord will honor you in Jesus' name. I have a short time uh, to minister the word. I have been praying for this meeting and what the Lord has put in my heart in this weekend is that we teach, I teach on prayer. To look at prayer, the importance of prayer, why we need to pray, and to believe God that there will be a revolution in the lives of everyone in the area of prayer, that people will return to their prayer altars, that people will be set on fire for the Lord to pray and to prevail in prayer. And that's why we've taught on prayer, prevailing in prayer, and things like that. But this morning, I want to speak on the anointing to pray. My time is really gone, but I will still speak in the next few minutes, and then I want to pray for you for an impartation of the spirit of prayer because you can be imparted to pray. There can be transference of the anointing upon your life. Glory be to God. So that prayer does not become a struggle. Glory be to God. Now let's begin by looking at two scriptures. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 30. Exodus chapter 30 verse 30. In Exodus chapter 30, God gave Moses the composition of the anointing oil. If you read from Exodus 30 verse 22 to 25. But in verse 30, God said, and you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister to me as priests. The word to consecrate there means to set apart. To anoint. The word anoint there in Hebrew is from the word Meshach. Meshach. M-E-S-H-A-C-H. -E Meshach. You know, in Hebrew. While in Greek is Chris from where we get the word Christos. Christos is where we get the word in English, Christ. Christos means the anointed one. So when you say Jesus Christ, it means Yeshua, the anointed one, the Messiah. Now he said you will anoint them. Now the word Meshach means to rob, to smear. It means to rob or smear with oil. For the purpose of consecration or setting apart unto a divine use or a divine office. To rob, to smear for the purpose of setting apart consecration for a divine use or a divine service. In First Samuel chapter 16, Samuel had been praying to God about Saul. And one day God told him, he said, how long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing that I have rejected him, fill your horn with oil. Thank God today we don't use horns, we use bottle. Imagine if we bring horn into the church and fill it with oil. Those of us that came from southwest Nigeria, I'm sure you, will, you begin to think somehow. Hallelujah. Because horn stands for something else over there. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says in verse 16, verse 13, when he got to the house of Jesse, 1 Samuel 16 and verse 13, let's read together. 1 Samuel 16 and verse 13, let's read together. One to go. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Glory be to God. Anointing is an empowering of the Holy Spirit to operate in an office or perform or accomplish a task for God. Anointing is an empowerment. Samuel poured the oil on David 
in the presence of his brothers and the bible says the spirit of god came upon david from that day now let me quickly make a distinction between the physical oil and the spirit the physical oil is symbolic the physical oil is not the holy spirit it is symbolic but when you go in the scriptures check in the scriptures you will see that wherever the physical oil is involved or applied the spirit comes to rest there like we see in this case he poured the oil on david and then the spirit of god came upon david if you read first samuel chapter 10 also in the anointing of saul you see that after he poured the oil on saul he told saul certain things that will happen to him and then he said to saul that you will meet a company of prophets and the spirit of god will come upon you glory be to god so the oil is not the holy spirit but wherever the oil is applied the spirit rests glory be to god now so we said the anointing is what an empowerment let somebody say an empowerment say it again say an empowerment the anointing is an empowerment of the holy ghost upon a person's life it empowers you to perform a task it empowers you to stand in an office and do a divine assignment so someone can be empowered or anointed to preach someone can be empowered anointed to teach someone can be empowered anointed to sing someone can also be empowered or anointed to pray are you still here with me if you are still here shout hallelujah in isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 god says the, this, the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord has anointed me to preach good tidings he has anointed me to he has anointed me to to do what here to preach good tidings so when the anointing comes on you upon you it is always to do something my sister led a powerful worship this morning that is under the influence of the anointing the anointing was on her to lead in that worship and lives were blessed i enjoyed the worship so the anointing can come upon you to be is to, to pray and to prevail in the place of prayer can somebody say amen now in exodus chapter 30 from verse 22 to 25 god told moses the composition of the anointing oil now understand with me that in the old testament a lot of the things that god was telling them was symbolic because the bible says that the true temple the true tabernacle is the one that is established in heaven while the one on earth is what the copy we read that yesterday are you still here with me so the things that were in the old testament a lot of these descriptions they were types and they were shadows of the real thing that is coming so when you look at the composition of the anointing oil please you can write and read later because of our time exodus 30 22 to 25 the anointing oil had basically four components number one he calls it pure ma hallelujah you remember when jesus was born and the wise men came they brought gold frankincense and ma so number one is pure ma number two is sweet cinnamon and sweet calamus number three is cashier and then number four is olive oil now, when you divide that further, the pure ma, the sweet calamus, the cassia, sweet cinnamon, those three fall into the category of spices or perfumes. Say with me, say spices. Say perfumes. Say it again, say spices. Say perfumes. So there is the category of the spices. And then the second category is the oil. 
the olive oil. So basically, the anointing is composed of two components. The perfume and then the oil. Now, what is the perfume for? Let's look at it. If someone walks into this place and wears an expensive, you know, perfume and the person stands at the door at the back, what happens to all of us? We want to tend to look fair because the aroma begins to radiate from that place to the front. So, the perfume is symbolic of impact. Let somebody say impact. Because if there is a strong perfume here, all of us become impacted by it. So wherever the anointing is, the anointing has an impact component. Say with me, say impact component. Say with me again, impact component. So there is an impact component. Hallelujah. That's why the anointing can break the yoke. That's impact. is for action. That's why the anointing can heal. As we have seen this morning. That is impact. That is action. And when the anointing to pray comes on you. Your prayer also becomes an impactful prayer. It becomes a prayer that is result oriented. That produces result. You don't just pray and pray alone. But now when you pray. There is result. There is effect. Are you still here with me? I pray for you as the anointing comes upon your life that from today, your prayer will begin to produce an effect, produce an impact in the name of Jesus. Your prayer will not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody shout a believing amen? amen. The second dimension of the oil is only I mean of the anointing oil is olive oil, and for all of us here, we know that, that know about automobiles. You put oil in your engine for what? For the engine to receive lubrication, and because of that lubrication, the engine can run for several years. Are you still here with me? And when you put in lubrication, and after some time it becomes wear out, what do you do? You pour it away and put a new one. That's why he says, my head shall be anointed like a, a new oil. That shall anoint me with fresh oil. My head shall be lifted up and you will anoint me with fresh oil. And that's why you need the fresh oil every time. So when the anointing to pray comes on you, number one, your prayer becomes impactful. Number two, you have lubrication. You have stamina in the place of prayer. There are people that can't pray more than 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, they don't want to know what to say again. There are people after 30 minutes, they don't know what to say again. They're just looking around. They are tired. But when the oil of prayer comes on you, you can be in the presence of God praying for hours. Why? There is stamina. There is lubrication. Are you still here with me? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Say with me. Say my father. I'm not hearing you say my father. Say I receive the anointing to pray right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm only hearing people in the front. I'm not hearing the voices of people at the back. Say my father. I'm not hearing the choir. Say my father. I receive the anointing to pray right now. In the name of Jesus. So when the anointing comes on you in the place of prayer. Number one. Your prayer becomes impactful. Your prayer produces result. Your prayer has effect. And number two, there is a lubrication and there is a stamina to keep you on praying until you prevail in the place of prayer. Now, in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, the message translation. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Let's read the message translation together. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed this morning? How many of you are ready for the anointing? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 12 
And verse 10, the message translation. Message. Message translation. Now, message translation says, Next, I'll deal with the family of David and those who live in Jerusalem. I'll pour a spirit of grace and prayer over them. Then they'll be able to recognize me as the one they so grievously wounded that piercing spear trust and they weep all oh, out they weep deep mourning as of a parent grieving the loss of a firstborn child. Now our emphasis from that verse is that God says I will pour on the house of David what? The spirit of grace and what? And prayer. So the spirit of grace and prayer is real. It can be poured upon a person. Why many struggle to pray is because the anointing is not on them. Why many struggle to pray is because there is no lubrication. And why many pray and can prevail is because they are not anointed for their prayers to be effective. Now listen to this. When the anointing comes on you, how will you know? You see, the anointing we saw when Samuel poured the oil on David, what came upon David? The Spirit of God. Now, one characteristic of spirits is that spirits can control people. Are you still here? For example, you know, there are individuals that look very gentle like me. Amen. I think I'm gentle. Amen. But when they get angry, start running away. Why? Because the spirit of anger takes control upon them. And before you know it, they develop extraordinary strength. Before you know it, they break all the electronics in the house. They go out and break the windscreen of the car. They can even kill. Why? A spirit came to control them. Are you still here? I remember my early days in the university were ministering. You know, it was a deliverance session. So one young, they came to call me to pray for one young lady because she was manifesting and nobody could minister to her. Tiny. Of course, I was also very tiny there. But she was tinier than me. Small girl. And as we are praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I tried to grab her hand. She flung me. Tiny girl. She just flung me. Glory be to God. Why? A spirit was at work. So spirit control. When the spirit of prayer, the anointing to pray, comes upon you, it influences you. It controls you. Another way to put it, it drives you. It produces a driving to the place of prayer. Now, in Mark chapter 1, verse 12, we're going to read from a couple of translations. Mark chapter 1, verse 12. Let's see when the Spirit came upon Jesus Christ. Mark 1, verse 12. Let's read from the, okay, message translation. At once, the same Spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. New Living Translation. Quickly, New Living Translation. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness. Now, Amplified Version. Amplified. Amplified. Glory be to God. Let's read together. One to go. Immediately, the Holy Spirit from within drove him out into the wilderness. Now, there is a translation called the Weymouth New Testament. The way what New Testament says, at once the spirit impelled him to go out into the desert. And the old King James say that and immediately the spirit drive him into the wilderness. So when the anointing comes on your life, there is a driving. Now, if you are a preacher, you will realize that when you come under the anointing to preach, you can stand for six hours and you're not going to feel any pain. Hallelujah. Now, I do that a lot. I was in Kenya two weeks ago. And I was preaching daily, five, six hours. Daily for the whole week. It was when I got back to Nigeria, I knew that I knew what I had done. Are you still here with me? 
Right. Why? Because when the anointing is on you, it produces a driving effect. Are you still here? Yesterday, I started preaching from 12.30 till 5.30. And it just kept driving me. But it was when I got back to the hotel that I knew that I'm no longer driven. Are you still here? I wanted to make a call. And the next time I would wake up, it was after one hour. I didn't know I slept off. Hallelujah. So the spirit produces what? A driving. Let somebody say driving. Let somebody say driving. Let somebody say driving. So when the spirit of prayer, the anointing comes on you, there is a driving. I was preaching in Kent some years back at the Redeemed Church. Uh, uh, pastor Lawal is the pastor of that church. And, you know, um, in, in Kent. And I was talking on prayer. And then I prayed with everybody. It was on a, a Friday. Then on Sunday, a man came to me. He's a medical doctor. He said, sir, I have a problem. I said, what happened? He said, after the Friday meeting, I went to sleep. Then on Saturday, I was at work. Then in the afternoon, something came upon me inside the office. I had to leave the office. I just noticed I started praying in tongues. So I had to go into the toilet. The thing didn't stop. So I had to walk away to the open field. And I was praying for about 30 minutes. He said, it has never happened to me before. He said, I, 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 are you sure that I'm normal? I said, yes, you are normal. I said, what came on you is the anointing. It's the spirit of prayer. If the spirit produces a driving. I said, but now you have to build it up. Every time it comes, you have to respond. Because the spirit of God is depicted by a dove. And one thing about a dove is that a dove does not struggle with you. So if you don't respond, it will withdraw. But I pray for you that from today, you will respond in the mighty name of Jesus. I thought I will hear a louder amen. I thought I will hear a believing amen. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Now, there are five things that happens when the anointing to pray comes. But my time is up. I will share one. And then we will pray. When the anointing to pray comes on you, it produces what is called guidance in prayer. Guidance in prayer. Romans chapter 8, verse 26, Living Bible Translation. Romans 8, verse 26. My time is almost up, ma. What can we do? Can you give me like 15 more minutes? Okay. Let me just share this, and then we'll round up. Living Bible Translation. No, not Living Bible. Uh, the, I mean, not living, New Living Translation. The Living Bible. The Living Bible. Romans 8, verse 26. You projected the living Bible yesterday. Hallelujah. So can you project it? The living Bible, TLB. Romans 8.26. It says, let's read together church. One to go. And in the same way, by our faith, the Holy Spirit helps us with our daily problems and in our... Wait, wait, wait. What does the Holy Spirit do? He helps us in what? Our daily problem. And in what? In our prayer. So when the anointing comes, because the anointing is the spirit, the Holy Spirit can help you in your prayer. It is the Holy Spirit stepping in, coming in to help you in your prayer. Glory be to God. Now let's move on. Why do we need the Holy Spirit to help us? He says, for we don't even know what we should pray for, nor how to pray as we should. Two things are mentioned there. Number one, what? And number two, how? Now, it's not saying we cannot pray. Every Christian can pray. How do you pray? You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. But to know what and to know how you need the anointing. 
To know what? To know how? He said, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with such feelings that it cannot be expressed in words. So when the Holy Spirit comes to us to help us, when the anointing comes upon us, the anointing comes to help us to do what? To know what to pray for and to know how to present the prayer. How to pray it. The Phillips translation says, the Spirit also helps us in our present limitations. The old King James said the Spirit helps in our infirmity. So when it comes to prayer, we have limitations. Are you still here? And that's why you need the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor you have limitations when it comes to prayer. Look for somebody else say you have limitations when it comes to prayer. Look for another person say you have limitations when it comes to prayer. Hallelujah. And what is the limitation to know what and to know how? Amen. You know, in Matthew chapter 20, from verse 20 to 22, the mother of the Zebedee's children came to Jesus. And he was praying to Jesus. He said, I have a request. Grant my request. And Jesus said, what is it? He said, grant that one of my sons will be on your left and the other will be on your right in your kingdom. Now, that was a prayer. But she was given an opportunity to pray, but she didn't know what to pray for. Glory be to God. Look at verse 22. Let's read together. Verse 22. One, two, go. But Jesus said to her, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Many of us are praying, but we don't know what. We don't know what. We are praying over our families. We are praying over our career. But we don't know what to pray for. Can you imagine the daughter of Herodias dance and please Herod. And Herod said to her, ask me anything to half of my kingdom and I will give you in Mark chapter 6. And she didn't know what. She ran to her mother. And the mother said, ask for the head of John the Baptist. That lady will have been made for life. But she didn't know what. Many of us come before the Lord, but we don't know what to pray for. We are praying for our children, but we don't know what to pray for concerning them. So when we talk about guidance in prayer, when the anointing comes on you, you know what? Because you will now be praying by revelation. Let somebody say revelation. You know, there are times we go to pray for the sick. Sometimes in the hospital, people are sick and they are dying. And you know, everybody has been praying and praying. And then we get there to pray. And as we're about to pray, the Holy Ghost open our eyes. And say, pray this way. This is why the sickness has been there. A young lady couldn't get married. She was well advanced in age. She's been praying. She's a believing God. And we were in a prayer meeting. And the Holy Ghost opened my eyes. And I saw in a vision. That her parents took her somewhere. And it was a forest. And they had to cut some animals. Put the blood on her. And she had to be naked. In that vision. So I said to her, I said, there was something that they did. This, 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 this. She said, yes, so that was before I got born again. It's been long. Now that thing was done for her to get a good husband. But that thing began to walk against her from getting married. And she was well advanced in age. I think about 34, 35 at that time. And we prayed that day. And it was broken. Why? Because by revelation, we got to know what? What to pray for. As the anointing comes on you, your prayer will not be wasted. Ah! The Lord will open your eyes to know what to pray for. To know what to pray for in the name of Jesus. You will get the right direction. You will get direction on, on, on what to pray concerning that situation. You will get right direction on, on what to pray. Steps to take in the name of Jesus. 
Now let's move on because of our time. Romans again, chapter 8, verse 26 and 27 now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 26 and 27, amplified. Amplified. Then we read this and there we go. He says, so too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. So the how is talking about presentation. The way in which the thing we go through. Are you still here? Are you still here? You might be a lawyer and have a good case. But if you have bad presentation, you may lose a good case. Are you still here? Now, he said, but the spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Verse 27, quickly, verse 27. Hallelujah. And he who searches the hearts of men, note what is in the mind of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit, what is his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints, according to and in harmony with God's will. So when the Holy Spirit gets involved, you are not just praying. You are praying the way it should be done. And that's why one of the reasons God gives you the gift of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. You are praying in according to his will. And he says the spirit takes over the prayer. And then by agony which cannot be expressed in words. Let somebody say agony. Yesterday we talked about agony in Luke chapter 24. Chapter 22. Can we look at verse 42? Luke 22, 42. Jesus, is somebody getting blessed today? Are you getting blessed? Yeah, Rabba Shaka Talaba. Luke 22, verse 44, sorry. Verse 44. Verse 44. Yeah, New King James Version. Okay, we can read this one too. Let's read one to go. And being in an agony of mine, he prayed all the more earnestly and intently. And his sweat became like great cloths of blood dropping down upon the ground. Now, we established yesterday that angels are to strengthen him to be able to pray it this way. He had gone the first time. He had gone the second time. He didn't come back with results, but this third time, he went into agony. And in this agony, there was a struggle. But the spirit, the angel of God came and strengthened him. And in this agony, he was able to present the case that is there was an intensity let somebody say intensity listen to me there are prayers that will require intensity mm. there are prayers that will what require intensity agony is a language of the in the is a agony in prayer is a language of the spirit the heart is so agitated that you lack the language or words to express the body. Under such intensity of prayer body, the Holy Spirit comes along to help. He takes over the prayer and groans with unspeakable agony through you. Such agony may be expressed in groaning, in sighing, in weeping, in screaming, as the case may be. Now let me run it up there. He says, the Holy Spirit takes over the prayer with what? With agony. Agony is a language of the Spirit. Is what? A language of the Spirit. Agony is when the Holy Spirit has taken over the prayer. And then, because of the extreme agitation within you, you do not have words to express what the Spirit is praying through you. You don't have the words. You don't have the words to express it. Therefore, you only respond in weeping, in signs, in groanings. Are you still here? Somebody should be coming to your mind now. What is her name in scriptures in the Old Testament? Hannah. The Bible says, for only her mouth moves, her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. And then Eli came and said, woman, you are drunk. Get your wine off thee, she said. 
I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I've never taken wine or strong drink, but out of the abundance of my soul, of my power, of my pain, I have poured out my soul unto God. In the place of agony, there is a pouring out. Let's have say pouring out. Say it again, say pouring out. Say one more time, say pouring out. There is a pouring out. And when she poured out the pain, the grief, the complaint, the Bible says, and she left the place and she was no more sad. Why? Something has been released. You cannot be in agony and leave the place and still be feeling sad and dejected. Now that realm requires the Holy Spirit. And we want to pray today that the anointing will come upon you. I thought somebody would shout amen. Woof! That the spirit of prayer will come. Listen to me. There are prayers that require intensity. Are you still here? Are you still here? Oh, yalabako toshika. There are some doors that won't open until you get to the realm where the Holy Spirit takes over the prayer. And it's only responding to you through sighs and agony and weeping and sobbing and, and groaning. Hallelujah. I remember Charles Finney, one of the greatest evangelists that lived. And the Bible, I mean, historians say that after Apostle Paul, nobody won as many souls and impacted as many lives as Charles Finney. But he used to have a companion by the name of Father Nash, who was a prayer man. One time they went to a place to pray to for crusade and they were doing the crusade for seven days and at the end of the crusade he had preached hundreds and thousands have been saved many have been healed then a woman walked up to Chasfini and said please you need to come with me to my hotel since the day you started this meeting a man checked into the room in my hotel and the man has refused to come out and he's always been making a funny sound so please I think the man is under oppression so they got there and by the time they would get there it was Father Nash for several days he was groaning in the spirit making groans. Now that is when the Holy Spirit takes over the prayer from you. It is no longer you praying according to your knowledge, according to your understanding. The Spirit of God has taken it over. And hear me, if we must win our world for the Lord, if we must have certain doors break, if we must break certain foundational patterns in our families, if some yokes must break, we must get to the point we are the Holy Ghost takes over our prayer. A level of intensity. Now, how does God anoint you for prayer? Basically, how does God anoint? There are two ways by which God anoints. Now, we just said this, we won't go into scriptures because of time. Number one, it's called God's sovereign will. That is God deciding to pour anointing upon somebody hallelujah he says if anybody is thirsty john chapter 7 let him come to me he that believeth in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water he said this speak ye of the spirit which shall be poured upon them that believe for the spirit was not yet poured glory be to god so if a man is thirsty he said in isaiah i will pour water upon the thirsty ground and i will pour my spirit upon your children so when a person is thirsty when a person is thirsty for god god can anoint you in the book of isaiah chapters i mean psalm 63 verse 1 he said oh lord thou art my god early will i seek thee my soul longeth for thee my flesh thirsted for thee in a dry land where there is no water to see thy glory and thy power as i have seen thee in the sanctuary when a man is thirsty for god god pours his spirit number two way by which god anoints is what is called spirit transfer spirit transfer is what we call impartation when god takes the spirit that is upon someone and put upon some other person we saw that in numbers chapter 11 moses complained and said god i'm tired god said look for 70 elders and these 70 elders tell them to come to the door of the tabernacle and i will take of the spirit on you and i will put it upon them and they shall prophesy 
Now, the Bible makes us to know that the works of God, they endure to generations. Psalms 145 verse 1. In other words, uh, when God begins a work in a generation, that work continues and continues and continues. So that was why when Jesus was living, in the last three, he said to the apostles, he said, receive ye the spirit. Then they pass it to the church fathers. And he's been passing down and passing down and passing down and he's passing down to us. Are you still here? So there is no anointing you need that God has not put upon somebody. Are you still here? God can take that anointing and put upon your life. And in the spirit transfer, it happened in two ways. Number one, there is corporate transfer. Like in the case of Numbers 11. Like we are here now. God can take the anointing upon someone and put upon the whole church that was what happened to Saul the Bible says Saul got to the company of the prophets and what happened to him the spirit came upon him and he began to prophesy and they said he is Saul also among the prophets why there was a corporate transfer taking place that's why sometimes when you come into a meeting like this you realize that by the time you go home your prayer life is revived what you couldn't do before you begin to do in the place of prayer why because a transfer has taken place are you still here so there is a corporate transfer and lastly there is a personal transfer when elijah took the mantle of elijah and struck jordan and jordan parted the sons of the prophet said the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. Corporate, I mean, personal transfer. Personal transfer will happen, number one, for if you believe in that person. If you don't believe, it will not come. Number two, if you honor that person, personal transfer does not come without honor. If you don't honor, the anointing will not come. It responds to honor. Now, number three, by which personal transfer happens is when you hear that person speak over and over and over and over again. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 2. He said, the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. There is a spirit that comes when you hear the word. That's how when you hear a preacher over and over and over and over, the dimension of the power of God upon his ministry begins to happen in your life. Why? By hearing over and over and over and over and over, there is a transference of spirit. Listen to me. I've been working with God for 35 years. Praying. Going around the world. Preaching for 35 years. And I can tell you, the anointing to pray is real. I knew a time I couldn't pray for 15 minutes. But I knew a time I started praying for 12 hours, non-stop. I knew a time I could pray for 24 hours, non-stop. But by taking coffee so that I don't sleep. Glory be to God. Something happened. An anointing came. And when it came, my life did not remain the same again. Sometimes I'm weak, I'm tired. But prayer is just flowing. Why? There is a spirit driving me. I woke up this morning after two or to three in the morning. And I wanted to sleep back because I was very tired yesterday night. But something drove me. And I continued to pray. Continued to pray till this morning. And this morning I said, okay, let me rest for at least 30 minutes. Before they will bring, come and carry me to the church. I still could not rest. Why? Something was driving me because spirits exercises control upon flesh spirits exercises control upon flesh and this morning we're going to pray to god just one prayer you're going to ask for from god because he said you have to desire 
you have to desire without desire there is no release i want you to pray prayer to god i don't know if you want your prayer life to remain this way or you want you your prayer life to be on fire there are doors that are waiting to be opened for you there are miracles that are waiting to happen in your family but it will require you to pray under the influence of the holy ghost for you to pray for the Holy Ghost to take over in agony, to take over in guidance, revelation, pray by revelation. Even though God spoke to me as far back as over 30 years ago, how he would take my ministry to nations of the world, it never manifested. Until one day I was in Port Harcourt. You know, my today I go to Port Harcourt quite often to preach. And I woke up in the middle of the night, 1 a.m., and normally I've been, it has been my habit from school days to wake up by 2 a.m. every morning to pray from the university days. I woke up 1 a.m. and I continued to pray. And I prayed till 1 p.m. And by the time I prayed, sorry, from 12 midnight, I started praying 12. By the time I stopped at 1 p.m., I slept off. And then I had a revelation. In that revelation, my dad had just died. This was 2003. I'm rounding up now, please. I want to share this testimony. It's important for you to hear it. That was the year my father died. And I saw him in a dream. And in that dream, myself and my dad were in a small room. In a mud house. Inside the jungle. And I said to my father. I said, we are talented. We are skilled. They will not appreciate our gifts here. Let's go to the big city. That is where they will appreciate our gift. I climbed the bed and I looked through the window. The big city was far away. And he said, yeah, that is true. We need to get to the big city. My dad was a man that was very talented. But he never had platform all his life. So he died in depression. He never had opportunities. And as he wanted to open the door, the handle of the door disappeared and he became a snake. So I jumped on the bed. I said, Daddy, kill the snake. Because when he was alive, he used to kill snakes a lot. When we were little kids, he would kill snakes and bring them to the house. And we would cut them and cook and eat them. Glory be to God. So I was happy in that dream. I said, Daddy, kill the snake. Then he looked at me and smiled. He said, I can't kill this one. I said, why? He said, that snake was his own father. I said, so your father is the one that locked us here. I said, so when you two die, you will lock me and my son here. That was how I woke up. I got direction. That year, my ministry became international. That year. That year, international doors to the ends of the earth. So there was a snake that was shutting the door. Are you still here with me? That's why you need the anointing. So that you won't just pray and pray. That's why some people say, Pastor, no, I have prayed all the prayer. I'm tired. They are not praying under the influence of the spirits. Rise on your feet with me. Just one prayer point. I want you to cry to God this afternoon. I'm sorry I've taken time, but we will round up in five minutes. Cry to God. Lift up your voice. Now, don't pray like a European. No, pray like somebody in the village. Don't look at your neighbor. I want you to lift up your voice after me. Say, my father. They are still praying like people in Scotland. Lift up your voice again. Say, my father. I believe you can do better. Say, my father. Pour the spirit of prayer on me. Now. Now, now, in the name 
of Jesus, lift up your voice to pray. Pray, 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 pray. Just play the keyboard, play strings on the keyboard, increase the volume. Play strings, strings, brother. Play strings we have two minutes is somebody pray is somebody pray is somebody pray hey I am part of copy talent. Oh, the copy take it to my head. Oh, brother, it I am copy talent. It I am a balada, a yada balada, a yada balada. Oh, the copy to get to the copy to my head. Oh, Raka Tababa. Yes, help that person. Help that person. If if anybody is falling ushers just bring them to the front bring them to the front let them lie down. Oh my God. Let the anointing fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Hey, I never baba baba. Hey, pata kata la de bosh. Hey, press. 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 You can leave her alone. Hey, la baba 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 baba. Leave her. Hey, praka tapa ya da baba. Oh, praka tapa ya da baba. Oh, praka tapa ya ketele de bosh. Oh, praka tapa ya da baba. My God, 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 the anointed is here, the anointed is here. Don't let this movement pass you by, don't let this movement pass you by. Yes, 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 yes. O prada ba ya da bosh, o prada ba ya da bosh, o prada ba ya da bosh. Ekata ba ya da baba. Let the anointing fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Raba ya da ba ya ko ba ya ba ya ko ba ya da ba ba le da bo. O pa te ke te ke te pa to pa te ba. Ah, hey, come on, you have one more minute, don't let it pass you by, say oh God, anoint me, anoint me, anoint me, anoint me, I need your anointing to prayer, let the spirit of prayer come, let it come. Hey, baye, oh 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 baye, 
One more minute, cry. Cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Anoint me afresh. Fresh oil. Cry to God. Fresh oil. The spirit of prayer. Spirit of supplication. In Jesus name we are praying. Amen. Because of our time, we have to leave. But if you are standing, please hold somebody on your left and on your right. If you are standing. I see the anointing being poured. And it's available for everybody. Now I'm asking you to hold your neighbor because many people will not be able to stand. Listen, I carry a tangible grace in this area. Proven for 35 years by the grace of God. And it will come upon you. And listen to me. There will be a revolution. My God. Don't, don't, don't join across the aisle so that the ushers can move. There will be a revolution. I don't have to touch you. No, don't join with people in your back. Just in your own rows alone. Just in your own rows. Don't join across. As you join those ends, lift them up. Say this with me. Please say it loud. Say, my father. I am ready. For a fresh baptism of fire. I am ready. For the anointing. To pray. And prevail in my life now in the name of Jesus say my father I am ready for the impartation anoint me now anoint me now let there be a revival in my prayer life by the anointing set me on fire set me on fire now 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 in the day of jesus now get ready as you join those hands, lift them up. Hold your neighbor very well. Father, you have confirmed your word over and over. You have imparted your people all over the world. You have borne testimony to the influence of the spirit of prayer. Your people are waiting. And I ask today for an impartation of the spirit of prayer that the oil you have poured on my life, you will pour in greater dimension upon the lives of these your children. Everyone under the sound of my voice, let nobody escape the outpouring. Let nobody escape the outpouring in the mighty name of Jesus. Do it right now. Do it right now. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Now get ready. One. Hold your neighbor very well. Something is happening. I'm going to count to seven. There are 37 people that something new is beginning in their walk with God. Two. Aha. Uh -huh. That is it. That is it. Three. Oh my God. Aha. 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 
Ah 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 for yes 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 five Jesus 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 sex are you ready my God my God my God my God my God see the anointing all over this place oh my God I see angels I see angels all over here distributing the anointing all over this place all over this place are you ready for it my God all your neighbor lift it up to God the moment I shout seven you will shout the name of Jesus and you will shout and you will not stop my God you will shout Jesus and you will continue shouting without stopping lift up those hands my God I see angels all over I see the oil all over are you ready to shout that name are you ready to shout that name seven Take it, 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 take it. No, 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 no. My God, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, manda balada balade bo sheke tele de bosta. He break it a little bit, shake it a little bit. Brother, buy a cup of steak, it a little bit. Run a little bit. He break it to set a little bit. Yes, let it come, let it come, let it come, let it come upon you now, now. Take it in the name of Jesus. Take it. He break it to set a little. Yes. Eh, by the supra da la basta, e pa koto she katalaba, e pra kata ye ketele de bo. Take it, take it, take it. Let it rest on you. Let it rest on you. Eh, eh, eh. E pa to karapa ye de bo, e pa ro katapa ye de bo. Yes, 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 E prata ya da balere bos. Take it, take it, take it, take it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. No, 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 no. In the name of Jesus. Come on, take the fire. Take it. E maya de bo shade le de bo shta e prakata ye de bo shekata la daba Lord 
let there be an overflow let there be an overflow tonight let there be an overflow you can leave her you can leave her Erakoto shekatabaya, o prata ya katale de bost. Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. The anointing is flowing at the back, at the back. Something is happening at the back. Oh my God, ushers move to the back. I sense a mighty wave of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes, 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 let it flow. Hey, man, the guy at the ball, the guy at the gabba, the guy at the ball, the guy at the ball, the Shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Out of my belly shall flow. Out of my belly shall flow. You can lose in your hands now. Lift it up to the Lord. Yeah. 
some of you after this meeting you will just realize an urge will come on you to pray when that urge comes don't don't miss it respond respond because something new has started in your life wave your hands and bless them my belly shall flow Somebody worship the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all what you have done. Oh, I give you reverence. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your manifestation. It was not the manifestation of a man. Thank you for healings that have taken place in this. 